What's up, modern steaders? Let's go outside and check and see how our Joel Salatin style pigorators are working out. Do you want to go outside? Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, look how dirty you are. This is what our pigorators are doing for us. Taking all that deep bedding throughout here and turning it into compost for us. Just taking that all and they're just turning it for us and making some awesome compost. So this is another thing like growing free food from our pigs last year. This right here is we're growing free bacon from our winter chicken coop this past winter. And then we're gonna get free awesome beyond organic compost for our garden. I mean guys, I just love this stuff. This is just so amazing, all the stuff that we can get. It's just a continuous cycle. We buy the hay once, we get bacon out of it and we're gonna get vegetables out of it. And then that compost on that garden is gonna get more earthworms every year. It's gonna help so we don't have to water our garden. I mean, it's just crazy how excited this makes me. Dirty pig means a working pig. If you guys wanna learn more about Joel Salatin and his methods of growing food and raising animals, he's gonna be in the Homegrown Food Summit with 37 other presentators. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for the Homegrown Food Summit. Most of you guys know we're hatching out some Icelandic chicks. And if you haven't, I'll put the video here for you guys to go watch it. We kind of have a dilemma right now. We want to start hatching out Icelandic chicks, pure Icelandic chicks, for our own selves and so we can start selling them to people who are looking for Icelandic chicks. And I want to keep all the chickens in New York City. I mean, why not? We got this beautiful place. So the one problem is, is we need to find a new home for Mr. Biggs. Because we only want one rooster. So the cool thing is the Icelandic chicken eggs are a little bit smaller and they're a different color so we can tell them apart from the barred rock eggs. So if we have just the Icelandic rooster, we can let him breed all the hens and we don't have to worry about it. And the other cool thing about that is, is we can start introducing Icelandic blood into our barred rocks. And one of the cool benefits we're hoping to kind of get into the barred rocks from the Icelandics is a couple of things. Icelandics like to go broody, and bod rocks, it's kind of bred out of them nowadays. So if we can get that trait into them, it'd be awesome. And if we can get the higher foraging rate bred into the bod rocks, and then maybe we can get a little bit bigger of a bird out of an Icelandic because the bod rocks are bigger. But we're totally gonna keep 100% pure Icelandic chicks too. So, if you guys know of anybody in the New Hampshire, Vermont, New England area who wants an awesome barred rock rooster, Mr. Biggs, leave it in the comments down below and we'll try to get a hold of you guys and work something out. We need to clean Blackie's cage. We're trying to get her outside. She's healing up good. You know, she's healing up good, but she's still a little... It's still not raw, but it's not completely healed and feathered up. Her feathers are growing in. So I've just been a little nervous to stick her back out with the other chickens. So we're gonna take her outside right now. We'll leave her outside for a little bit and I'll clean her pen up. Be nice, Pluto. It's a really nice day out here today, so perfect time to get her out, get her some fresh air. What we'll do is we'll remove the tray Stop. 
Pluto's got a new friend. Is that your new buddy, Blackie? <laughs> so fast you can't even stop yourself from going in the bushes. Look how good they're doing, eating that grass down in eight hours. That's how long it was before we moved them. And then this. So you know they're getting an awesome diet. Did I show you the new keychain Olivia made us for the Kubota? Isn't that nice? What a sweet daughter I have. It's too hot to keep doing our chores in our boots. Let's get the keen zone. Mowing up next to this apple tree, and I was just looking at it. You guys see how loaded it is with apples? Look at all those apples. There's three right in that clump. This clump has a bunch. That has a bunch. Look at all the apples. Look at over here. This is gonna be an awesome apple season. I'm probably going to have to take some apples off of these trees or they're probably going to end up breaking the branches. Let's go look at the other apple tree. Whoa, look at that. The apple trees are loaded. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them this growing season to make sure we're not gonna break any branches. That'd be a huge disappointment. I'll have to wait and see. Now, let this grow. Ice cream pie for tomorrow. Ooh. That's tomorrow. I'm going to oh. separate. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm going to start with this. The less dishes, the better. Right. Trying to make an easy dessert for tomorrow. It smells good. For 10 minutes. <laughs> it'll make a good video. I don't know. Go for it. It'll yeah, work. it'll work. And there you go. <laughs> What's that? I said, and there you go. We'll bring it over like that. And there you go. Here's dessert, guys. Oh, you should make homemade whipped cream. Okay. How is it? Ice cream's good. That's all that matters. And that's how you make a modern, steader, gluten-free ice cream pie. And next time you can make whipped cream. Yes, and next time we'll have to make some homemade whipped cream. We're gonna have this tomorrow night at a friend's house we're going over to, so we'll have to let you know how it is in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it, it's really helping our channel grow. We appreciate it. And we'll see you right back here next time at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye.